in both churches, there's a diversity of opinion. The, the Lutheran Church, especially in America, doesn't have the strong social justice background that the Methodist Church does. It just doesn't. Um, we are working to change that. Here, we have not, although there have been members of this congregation who have children who are gay, myself included, um, it's, uh, it has not been as big a push here, unfortunately. I'd like to see that change. There is a huge LGBT community. They hide in fear. They live, they don't trust the church at all. That's what I feel the people of faith, of faith are called to do, are to take stands when no one else will take stands. Um, it, is part of, it is part of our calling. I know I have colleagues in this community who would not agree with me, um, but I do feel, as Pastor Allen did, that this is something that we are called to do if we are preaching Jesus' gospel of love and inclusion for all people. Over here, I think there are very, there is a, a larger number who are opposed. Um, I, they don't necessarily talk about it, but they talk to me about it. Some of them oppose it on faith grounds, some of them oppose it um, on the constitutional piece. Um, I would like to see more of them put themselves publicly on the record. Um, however, I don't know that, I struggle with whether it's my job as their pastor to be poking them in that way because I do believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. I do believe that the Spirit will call them to do that and I think it will, many of them, as we get closer. I don't hear people on the left saying that the, the that hard right Catholics are not true Catholics, or are not true, okay. you know, I don't hear that, but I hear the other side belittle and almost to try to discredit faith leaders okay. such as you. Now you're, I see where you're going. That, that, yeah, it's a discrediting mm -hmm. of you and other faith leaders that you're, you're just not true Lutherans. Okay. Um, I guess what I would have to say to that is that I, in my individual faith journey, and as a pastor, I don't believe that I have the right to say anyone is or is not a true Christian, Jew, Muslim, fill in the blank. I don't have the authority to make that statement. Um, that is not my judgment to make. Um, and I think that for many of us that are opposed to this amendment, that's, that's where we come from. We don't, we don't have the authority to make that statement. We, we are not here to judge. Um, that is not what we're called to do, to make judgments on others. Um, the judgments that we do make are that all are welcome, all are equal, all deserve equal rights under the law. Um, and it is not our job to say that because you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, you do not fit in our, in, you know, and therefore we can't we're not going to allow you to have these rights. It is not our job to make that judgment. That is also why we feel the amendment is unconstitutional, because we do not have the right um, as, as churches and as uh, individual members of faith communities to make those statements. Um, we are not God. And we understand that we are not God. We are created beings. Um, and it is God who is, in our perspective, the ultimate judge. And I would, for myself personally, and for most people that I know on this side of the issue, we would all rather err on the side of grace and openness and welcome um, than exclusion and closing the door. If we lose, I'm gonna be doing a lot of pastoral care with people. <laughs> I just know I am. Um, and that's okay too, that's part of my job, but uh, if we lose, the conversation continues. It has to continue, it cannot stop, because we as, as a people of faith have to continue evolving. Um, the church is a living organism because it's made up of people who are living organisms, and it has to continue to grow and evolve and change, or it will die.